report, so I, I will essentially bring you into a, a hopeful, hopefully to bring you into a, a mode where you can use the flash code. So this is a particular user's perspective here. Um, not so much about the, lots of the details of the solvers, which I, I guess you already heard about the last two weeks. <coughs> And uh, to begin with, before we essentially start to set up our own problems <coughs> and uh, go into the details of how to run the flash code, I will give you a little bit of overview and also a little bit of overview on the yeah, uh, history of, of the flash code. Let's see, because I... Um, so this, uh, the flash code, the main message here is the flash code is uh, developed at the University of uh, Chicago at the Flash Center. They are, um, it's funded by the DOE and there are about, around about 20 people actually working on it and you will get the impression why, you know, this is a, a fairly big project because this is a very diverse project also. So the flash code itself is an and three-dimensional adaptive mesh refinement code for hydrodynamics and magnetohydrodynamics. And I also, I want to stress here, it's a multi-physics code, so you can handle not only gas dynamics, but many other purposes we will uh, see here. <coughs> so, and uh, apart from these 20 people essentially working at the flash center, which also, you know, fluctuate, uh, a couple of, uh, um, <clears throat> contribution from outside uh, uh, brought into the into the flash code here by you know in particular in, in, in extending the multi physics purpose here um, on ray tracing problems or radiation transfer sink particles which we will learn about the next uh, few days and also different algorithms, for instance, for solving the Poisson equation or solving uh, self-gravity problems and also things like uh, chemistry are brought in from uh, essentially outside of the flash center and are now uh, par part of the public version of the flash code. So the main focus uh, initially initiated was uh, essentially, that's why the name as well, uh, on studying thermonuclear flashes, essentially explosion on, on the surface of neutron stars and, and white dwarfs, and extending to high energy density physics and uh, fluid structures. But also the flash code, because it is a multi physics code, multi purpose, and very uh, very widely used by, by many other groups, uh, in particular, I just list a, list a few of them, so on, on the star formation, which I'm doing myself, and also uh, interaction planet, planet dynamics, cosmology, it has a cosmology part, and hence people are studying uh, galaxy formation, galaxy uh, merging, and <clears throat> what we also do is, is looking at magnetic fields, magnetic field amplification, and uh, another purpose, or another widely used field is turbulence with the flash code. So here are some nice pictures from actually from the uh, flash web page from the center, so where you essentially see uh, yeah, the, the main research topic, they, they started with so explosions or thermonuclear flashes on the surface of white dwarfs and uh, you also see the, the adaptivity of the, of the code here marked by these blocks of um, different refinement levels. <coughs> yeah. To give you a little bit more background, so by now the, the manual, the user's manual has already grown to up to 500 pages or so, so you can imagine. And the main, main thing is uh, to, to explain a lot of the, the examples and a uh, lot of the different purposes and a lot of the um, different usage of the, the flash code which are uh, entered into the big uh, manual by now. I don't have a, a printout with me. I'm still using the PDF version here because uh, you can imagine it's fairly sick to carry around. So um, 
on, on the history, so the entire project of the flash code started uh, somewhere in, you know, yeah, 15, more than 15 years ago um, <clears throat> in 1997, uh, funded by the, by the um, so-called, at this time, the Accelerated Strategy Computing Initiative. Now it's called uh, also uh, AAC, but uh, changed uh, the name, so by now it's called uh, Advanced Simulation and Computing. Um, center essentially flash center and again the, the main purpose at this time was essentially you know, um, computing thermonuclear flashes and maybe most probably also do a little bit of research on uh, atomic bombs I guess. Um, <clears throat> So the first release was then a couple of years later in 2000, here the, the list of authors from the original paper. So this is the typical paper you cite when you use the, the flash code uh, for your research, the 2000 Frixel et al. paper. And um, <clears throat> some of the stuff wasn't even built from scratch there. For instance, the, the hydrodynamic solver, the PPM, so the piecewise polytropic uh, so second order solver for the hydrodynamics was actually uh, already used or already developed for a code which was called uh, or is still called Prometheus, uh, which is a code also developed in collaboration with uh, German groups at the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics in, in Garching. So it also has a link to Germany where I'm from. Um, at this time, there wasn't any MHD solver and no self-gravity, but the entire thing was already built on the so-called Paramesh library, which is already delivered, was always delivered with the, with the flash code. So it's a, a block-structured adaptive mesh refinement, and you get the idea from this picture here. So you divide your cells always by a factor of two, and uh, neighboring cells or neighboring blocks uh, are only off by a factor of two at most. And uh, that's a very ordered uh, structure, a block structure. And in 3D, it's an octree. So you get an octree uh, based um, distribution of your, box, of your blocks here. Um, it supports different uh, geometries here from Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. It always did and it's still doing. And a couple of years later, 2002, they <coughs> came up with a major revision and a major uh, change uh, uh, or addition was essentially to include uh, magnetohydrodynamics. This was uh, done by these people here, so Powell et al. And uh, the solver is actually called after them, either Powell or eight wave solver. Oh, it's still a, a as the for the, for the hydro solver, it's a finite volume scheme, um, so an energy conserving scheme. And for the diff B, so the truncation or the reduction of the diff B error, it, it is done by a um, uh, truncation error method developed by Powell, which is very similar to what is called also a Detner hyper. A hyperbolic clinic, which you might have heard already. So what you do is essentially you try to wash out your diff B error um, on your entire simulation box and not accumulate it at a, a specific point. It also uh, has an, a different method to get rid of diff B errors by an elliptical projection method, where essentially you're looking for magnetic monopoles and uh, <coughs> dilute them with time and space. At this version, it already, uh, and this was thanks to Paul Ricke, included um, a module for self-gravity, which is then, of course, important to do, for instance, star formation, collapsing situations. And it also included then tracer particles or particles which can be used as dark matter potential or dark matter particles to do also cosmological simulations. And at this version, they already supported the output format of uh, HDA5. And then uh, another couple of years later, they came up with, a, with the version 2.5, uh, which is essentially a quite a long-lived version and where a lot of external contributors uh, participated in developing it. 
uh, took place. <coughs> so this is a, until yeah, recently I would say so uh, uh, for almost 10 years it was, um, or oh, eight years, it was used by a couple of, of research groups and we are still using this old version for, uh, for uh, some of our purposes. And as you can see here from the list, there are a couple of contributions based on uh, uh, dealing with radiation transfer problems uh, based on a ray trace, um, a ray trace algorithm on uh, which is called the hybrid characteristics and we will learn about this later this week about um, <coughs> done by these, by these authors uh, recourse and also improved by uh, Peters et al over the time uh, it started we started to include also zinc particles so based on essentially Paul Ricard's uh, tracer and dark matter particles we extended them so we can essentially uh, create these particles on the fly and also let them accrete mass and can use them as you know proxies for instance for um, protostars or a little stellar clusters and uh, also uh, an, another group uh, included new MHD solvers because it turned out that the, the eight wave solver the Powell solver had some yeah disadvantages usually it was uh, broke down for high Mach numbers because uh, you got essentially negative densities and negative pressures and there was a uh, there's an by now an, an different solver which is called Bouchou solver it ensures essentially positivity of your density and pressure and hence makes the code more stable also for high Mach number regimes <coughs> And then, um, yeah, essentially five years ago, they started to uh, totally restructure the code, came in, uh, coming up with the version three onwards. The version three was still kind of a little bit experimental, I would say. A lot of development took place, so they totally restructured, restructured uh, especially the internal database, so the memory database. And also one uh, major uh, development was including unsplit MHD solvers and unsplit hydro solvers done by Dongwook Lee, who is still at the, the Flash Center. And uh, with the advantage of the new Paramesh library, so three and by now Paramesh uh, library four is used, they supported a staggered grid. And I guess you also heard about this uh, the last weeks about <coughs> staggered grid has the advantage if you do your MHD for instance you can come up with a method called uh, constraint transport so which is which ensures essentially diff B's errors up to uh, only up to uh, numerical um, resolution essentially or numerical uh, of, of your uh, um, essentially numerical scheme <coughs> And uh, yeah, this, uh, the development went on and by now we are at oh, the, the flash center, the flash version is, is by uh, the version four, which um, included, an, as I said, this constraint transport algorithm and included also many, many uh, different physical um, modules like a diffusion solver, and for for them like something like an energy deposition with laser beams so this is where the the flash code stands right now so it evolved over over yeah more than a dec decade and um, <clears throat> is a very versatile tool on using can be used for many many purposes yeah as i said there's a, a big uh, Manual uh, delivered with, with the flash code if you download the source code or the, the source code which I give you later this afternoon. And uh, just to point this out, so some of the, uh, it, it, it comes with hyperlinks in the, in the PDF. So if you click on it, you will jump to the flash website and they will tell you a little bit more, especially about uh, particular parameters and particular uh, setups. So you essentially you're kind of um, 
you should use this, this feature if you, if you want to know more about these particular uh, parameters. <coughs> yeah, and one reason why this manual is so, so sick and why the, the code is essentially um, so big is it also comes with a couple of examples which is very good to get started with the code and also to come up with your own uh, setup because there's always some similarity to an already existing setup which you only have to uh, modify slightly um, and you can very quickly run your own essentially physical problem. And here's a list for instance of the yeah, typical uh, problems, typical test problems, just to see how the, essentially the code works, how accurate the solutions are um, listed here for the hydrodynamic test problems going from a you know, shock, shock tube, shock, shock tube um, setup to um, you know, a, a blast wave, a Seedorf explosion, uh, things you might already have heard of. And by now it also uh, includes some relativistic treatment which I haven't tried so far, but um, you're encouraged to have a look at, at this as well. And <clears throat> this goes on also for the, for the um, MHD part. Of course, there are these classical uh, test problems of uh, Brieu Wu and Orsak Tang, the vortex uh, problem, which you, uh, I encourage you to try out uh, this afternoon and also things like the uh, MHD rotor where you see alphane waves traveling and spin down and, and slowly rotating disk for instance. And um, apart from this there's a couple of you know a, a list of, of other test problems uh, related in particular to these uh, different physical modules that are now included here. For instance um, I don't know, uh, a particle module where you you don't need essentially uh, hydrodynamics where you can test your uh, can calculate or can uh, try to implement something like cosmic ray uh, acceleration so in general um, so the most of the code is is written in Fortran 90 um, hopefully you're by now a little bit familiar with it so Fortran very uh, standard code in, in still in astrophysics. So um, <coughs> a few parts are in, in C, mainly related to the to output properties with the HDF5 files. It is uh, highly modular um, and yeah, I would say fairly well organized in, in the directory structure. So what you what you see here is essentially the hierarchy of, of the directory structure. We start with, uh, this is your, um, what you see here, this is already in the, in the source directory of the, of the main director, directory of the flash code. And for instance, uh, the physics directory is split off in different yeah, physical properties, starting from cosmology and also hydrodynamics. Uh, so you can always, uh, can all find in the physics directory. And, um, of course, this is, this is subdivided or it goes on to higher hierarchies where you can extend uh, your own models, for instance, of uh, changing uh, source term, including source terms like heating or cooling properties. So just to give you a, a few numbers, so if you run your setup script, which we will talk in a, in a minute, um, you will typically find in your uh, object directory, which you try to, which you will then compile about 900 files uh, out of about uh, 3,000 uh, 3, 3, files of the entire flash code and the typical number of, of codes is of the order of um, 150,000. So not, not even that big so that uh, some codes have much more lines but this is fairly moderate I would actually say of the, the lines you typically use for uh, your simulations. So because the code is, is all widely used, uh, it, <coughs> the people have thought about you know, how to compile the code on different platforms, different um, hardware, and there's a specific directory called the sites directory where you typically find um, um, a modification of a make file uh, 
the makefile is, is called uh, makefile.h, which I didn't print here. And I already created a, a makefile which should work right away here uh, on, on the Hyatt's computer, so you shouldn't worry about this. But if you went on and want to try this on your, on your Mac or some other computer, you, you typically find some prototypes here uh, which you might modify slightly and then you can already run your, the flash code and compile it. <clears throat> yeah, here's a list of requirements. Of course, you need a, a Fortran compiler and, a big, and it is parallel, so you need an, an MPI library, an HDF5 library. This is all essentially already installed on Hiatus. I already compiled the code, so that shouldn't, shouldn't vary. You need a parameter library, which is, already, which is always delivered with the flash source, and maybe some external libraries like the hyper for the uh, implicit solvers, which they now support for diffusion problems, for instance. And um, mainly I use uh, the HDF5 output f uh, f uh, file formats for analyzing the data lately. But they support uh, also what is called the net CDF, which I actually don't have much experience. And output, of course, you get a number of log files uh, just in, a, in ASCII text format. <clears throat> yeah, a few words on the, on the grid structure. So with the new version, so since Flash version 3 and 4, they also disentangled essentially the solvers and uh, the underlying grid structure even more. And so, it so the Flash code is is very flexible in putting in, if you like, even your own grid ideas here. And uh, nevertheless, I will mainly stick with the Paramesh library, with the block structure um, adaptive mesh library. But it also supports, by now it's still a little bit uh, experimental under development, uh, a library called Chombo, which is a, a patch-based uh, AMR, which I think is, is very similar to what is used in the, in the Ramses course, for instance. And it also supports uniform grid. So it's a, it's a little bit odd if you think about you develop a code which should be uh, adaptive in, in, in space, essentially, and then go back to uh, do a uniform grid. But nevertheless, this is uh, quite helpful. For instance, if you do simulations of turbulence in a box, which you explicitly want to do on a, on a uniform grid, also to use, for instance, uh, fast Fourier transforms and so on. And uh, of course, then you, do, you, uh, you don't need all the, the AMR overhead here. So it's very slim and very efficient. So there are some purposes, of course, to, to use a uniform grid. <clears throat> Here's again a, a picture where you uh, can kind of see the, the grid structure in action uh, from a Kelman Helmholtz um, simula uh, instability simulation, which I encourage you to set up yourself. And what you see here is, so all these blocks, and we'll talk a little bit about, uh, are typically eight grid cells aside. And uh, so, of course, you want to have, that's the entire idea of AMR, you want to have a high resolution in uh, regions which have high, high structure. So in this case, of course, on the, on the interface between different density regimes, you want to have the highest resolution to resolve, for instance, your typical uh, kelvin Hamels eddies here. And as I said, so typical uh, block sizes have uh, eight grid points aside. So in, in 3D, it's uh, 512 grid points of active grid points. And um, the effective resolution you can quickly compute if you're interested. So the, essentially the, the resolution on the highest refinement level is uh, given by this formula here by 2 to the power of uh, your highest refinement level and then times uh, plus 2. This comes from the, from the 8. And we start so that the lowest refinement level starts not with 0 but with 1 here. And I guess it comes also from the idea of, of uh, using Fortran. So this is just to get your, you can quickly calculate the effective, the highest resolution effective, or the highest effective resolution for your simulation. <clears throat> so this is how a, a block uh, 
looks like. So it has active cells, as I said, typically eight across here in each direction. Uh, you can set this up when you use your setup script, so the, the Python script, which um, collects all your, your source code. You can set this up, so if you're not happy with, with eight, which is the, the typical number, and want to use higher blo uh, larger blocks, of course, if you use larger blocks, you, uh, you might lose, um, might waste a little bit of memory uh, because your resolution elements are bigger. But if, you, if your blocks are too small, of course, as you see here, your, the ratio of um, essentially ghost cells or guard cells to your active cells becomes then um, bigger and bigger. And the guard cells, it's kind of the number of guard cells you use, you can't really choose in this sense. It is determined essentially by the type, by the uh, solver you are using. Uh, for instance, for the PPM solver, you need at least four guard cells aside, uh, whereas for the eight wave MHD solver, you need only two. So this is essentially determined by, by the uh, <coughs> order of the integration scheme you're using. Of course, you are not stick to uh, you know to simulation boxes which are um, quadratic, but you can also have rectangular uh, simulation boxes which you can set up. Ex essentially, in your parameter file, this doesn't need to be known during compilation by uh, by parameters which are called uh, n block x, n block y, and n block c, which gives the essentially the the number of um, level one blocks in either direction. And here's an example, you know, where the, the x direction is stretched compared to the y direction by a factor of four. And this is the, these are the parameters you use uh, to get a setup like this. So then your, your actual blocks are still rectangular, but uh, of course your simulation box, your entire simulation box, oh sorry, the, your actual blocks so the, the uh, blocks you use to essentially solve your um, hydrodynamics are still quadratic, so they still have um, eight grid cells aside, whereas the entire simulation box is rectangular. So that's very easy to uh, set up. <coughs> so how is the refinement done? There's a one standard refinement criterion, which is called the second derivative criterion, which is, yeah, you can phrase it as also a shock capturing criterion. What it does, it essentially computes the second derivative and compares with, um, with this quantity here to get a dimen dimensionless error. And then this dimensionless uh, error is essentially uh, uh, probed within the, an, an within the, the code, and then it is decided whether certain regions should be refined or derefined. And here are the typical parameters. So you can use this uh, second derivative on your variables of your choice. So the standard one is, of course, the density. But you can also use temperature or any other uh, quantity you like here. This is also you can put in in your parameter file during runtime. And so far, you have the choice of using four of, of those different uh, variables here. And each variable is assigned a, a so-called cutoff for the refinement or derefinement. And here are the typical uh, parameters for this particular um, refinement criterion of, a, of the second order uh, shock capturing criterion. So if you want to have, uh, <coughs> if you want to be less um, Um, if you don't want to be, you know, refined as as quickly or less sensitive to the to the error, you want to increase, of course, both numbers here. So if you go up to 0.9 or 0.95, of course, your your criterion doesn't um, be is is not activated as quickly as uh, this number here is 0.8, which is the typical number. And uh, the same is true for the derefinement criterion. If you want to have, uh, want to be derefined more quickly, you also want to increase this number. So this is also something I encourage you to play around a little bit to see the um, how the, you know, 
dynamics of the grid depends on these uh, numbers. <coughs> Yes, yeah, it, it of course goes the other way around as well. Yeah, if you decrease these numbers, it uh, refines faster. And of course, you can um, implement your own refinement criterion. One is already uh, implemented here, the so-called genes criterion, which refines on the genes lengths. Um, which is for collapse problem, your physical length, you always want to have, want to refine. We will talk about this a little later uh, again. So this is, uh, strangely enough, it is right now in a link to uh, the particle module, which you often use also in collapse simulations. Um, so if you are looking for the genes criterion, you also have to include the, the uh, particle module. Um, which is done anyway uh, automatically, but you, you can also switch off the, the particle activity essentially by a, by a flag in your parameter file. And then if you want to wanna come up with your own criterion, for instance, just a, a density criterion, a density um, difference criterion, you want to modify a file call this here and put it in your own setup directory and then it will just override the standard one like the second derivative <coughs> criterion. So that's all, all of these um, modules you can and all of the existing files which are in the, in the flash tree you can modify yourself and put your own version always in your own setup directory and then when you um, compile the file or when, when you uh, create the uh, object directory where you find all the, the flash, uh, the, the source files, then it will be overwritten by your own version. So you see also a, a, a huge list of uh, different boundary conditions. Of course, the standard one, uh, so boundary condition on the, on the side of your simulation box, you know, from going from periodic reflecting and, and outflow, which is also uh, essentially inflow, so it is essentially transparent. Uh, and then a couple of others, um, like the, the diode, where you bounce on the, on the, on the wall, and also um, boundary conditions, which you can, um, which are associated with a particular grid structure, a particular uh, grid geometry here. And also you can put in a hydrostatic um, boundary condition and of course always open to use your own uh, boundary conditions as you, as you like. So there's always an interface. And all these quantities here, uh, you don't have to specify during compile time. This can be done in your runtime parameter file. Yeah, just a few words on the parallelization here. So this is done by a, what is called the Morton space filling set order. Um, so you walk along and in, in a set type of manner through your uh, simulation box. And this is uh, yeah, a quite efficient way also for the load balancing. And um, so you do a domain composition according to this particular algorithm and um, you end up with, with quite good load balancing. But uh, at this point, I, I want to mention that you know, the flash code so far has only a single time step for all uh, blocks, essentially. Regardless on which refinement level they are, there is only a single time step, which is then, of course, the smallest one found in the entire simulation box according to your CFL criterion. And um, that's, of course, also a reason why the flash code scales fairly well, because it's, yeah, in this sense, uh, there's not much of bookkeeping we, one has to do. Uh, it just does a domain composition, and it will scale more or less um, perfectly, because the time scales uh, are the same for all refinement levels. There's a little bit of um, a development uh, to speed up the code, what, you, what is called uh, super time stepping. So this is still an, uh, a thing under development. And this is particularly interesting for yeah, parabolic uh, equations. So if you have a diffusion equation, which have their own time step, and you can kind of circumvent uh, 
uh, being forced to use a diffusion time step for your entire simulation box by using the super time stepping. <coughs> Yeah, uh, another uh, couple of, of slides you have on the, on the directory structure, so you get a little bit of impression already how the directory structure is organized and where you find which part of the, of the code you might be interested. So there's, for instance, that the first one, uh, and everything is under the, the source directory I'm showing here. So the first thing is, of course, the, the driver, which is essentially um, the part which contains the main loop integrating your um, system over time done with, with this uh, file here with the evolve flash and, um, <coughs> and it has different driver modules for a split or unsplit scheme which is also something we will talk later this week again. Um, then the, the grid unit uh, as you can see that's uh, quite quite complicated. You find uh, the different uh, supports I, I was telling you already, so the Chombo library and the Paramesh library, and by now the, uh, everything is based on the Paramesh 4 library. Um, so this is the, the hierarchy of, of the, the grid, so-called grid unit. <coughs> and uh, actual hydrodynamics and also uh, magnetohydrodynamics you find in the, in the physics module uh, under the hydro uh, module and there's typically there's another subdirectory which is always called main. You find this uh, quite often and this splits up again in this uh, split and unsplit scheme and you find for instance here for the split scheme your typical PPM for the hydrodynamics and uh, and uh, relativistic hydrodynamics even, and then the um, MHD 8-wave uh, uh, wave solver, but also the other solvers. I was talking about the Bouchou 5 uh, and 3-wave, you, you also find in, in, uh, under this directory here. Of course, you need also to close your equations, so you need uh, a relation between your uh, density and pressure. This is done by the equation of state and the equation of state unit here. And uh, there's also a, a couple of options. Um, and mainly we use a, a gamma type uh, equation of state where you have a uh, relation of, of the pressure with a certain power of uh, an adiabatic index to the density. But uh, there's also a couple of other other possibilities here. And of course, uh, again, the uh, relativistic hydrodynamics has an own uh, equation of state. There's also a module which is uh, often called, uh, uh, I think, 3T for three temperatures for ions, neutrals, and, and um, electrons. Uh, and this has also an and separate equation of state here. Then, of course, you can couple your essentially your your uh, energy to certain source terms. In particular, uh, cooling and heating plays a crucial role. Uh, while, for instance, a, a certain region is collapsing, it has to cool. You can implement your particular cooling function in, in, in this directory and the same is true for the heating for instance by uh, radiation. But here also in, in this uh, source term you find for instance a, a module which is called steer so meaning you can steer up your or put in kinetic energy to a certain with a certain algorithm for instance to drive turbulence and analyze a turbulent medium. And of course the in, in the same directory, you find your chemistry, if you like. So uh, there is already an implementation, for instance, for primordial chemistry, if you want to study the formation of the first stars. Um, <coughs> under the, the grid uh, structure, you find a, a grid solver. So this is essentially decoupled from the hydrodynamics, meaning you, you can implement here, or what is implemented here, is uh, solvers for the Poisson equation, um, 
on different um, ways to solve the Poisson equation, which is again important to uh, study collapsing self, self gravitating objects, collapsing cloud cores, but also other uh, solvers associated, for instance, this, um, with an implicit solver, the hyper library you find in the, in the grid solver. And of course, it, uh, the flash code supports these particles, and part of, of the part of the particle module you find again in the in the grid structure. But um, you also want to see, and the, there wasn't any nice picture in the in the manual here. Uh, also, see the the particle directory where you find, for instance, the sync particles, which we will talk about, I, I guess, on Wednesday. <coughs> so essentially, to get uh, yeah started with with the flash codes and you know hopefully got a little bit of overview on, on the on the structure what you do is essentially you, you get um, the tar file or the, the source code which I, I uh, which resides in my home directory I give you the more detailed um, structure uh, more detailed path to it uh, you untar it and then uh, what you do in the first thing, without you don't have to, to look much, uh, step into this directory and do uh, a run a, a script called setup script, which essentially collects all the uh, different source files, Fortran source files for you and puts it in a single directory um, so you can set up and run your own problem. And uh, the setup script comes with a couple of options which we'll see also see uh, later. The most important are already listed in this, uh, in this line here, in these two lines. So typically you do an, an auto, which means it automatically uh, resolves all the dependencies. You don't have to worry about you know, picking uh, the, the stuff by hand. And then, of course, uh, important is initially for your during compilation, it already needs to know how uh, in, in which dimension you want to run your simulations. So you put in the dimensions already here. And then there's a, uh, uh, also an important uh, number, the, what is so called the max blocks. These are, uh, and this has to be also known during compilation because a lot of the uh, arrays in the flash code are static. So one has to know the the size of the arrays, and this number is linked to the maximal blocks on one CPU, essentially, uh, during during runtime. And for it depends on the, of course, on the on the dimensionality of your problem. Typically, for 2D, you can go up to five, maybe ten thousand blocks, fits easily in your memory of say uh, one gigabyte of um, memory for each um, core. Uh, for 3D, you, typical number would be more like 1,000. That gives you an, a code which has a size of about yeah, one gigabyte. So that just fits typically in, in your memory, depending, of course, on the, on the memory per core you have uh, available. And then just to not get confused, you can uh, specify the object directory. You want to put in all your Fortran files. Uh, if you don't do this, it ends up in a directory called objects. Then, then you step in and just type make, and hopefully you get, typically you get a, a, the, a final line of your compilation, tells you success, and then it generates um, an executable called flash4 for, for you. So this is how easy it is. If you don't modify anything, it should work you know, right away like, like this here. <clears throat> yeah, here have a few more options to this setup script. So there's an underlying Python script, which does, as I, as I told you, uh, collects all the, the source files for you and puts it in this object directory. Here I highlighted here the main, um, the, the most important parameters here, the most important options. Um, and of course, there are a, a couple of more. You can also type setup help, uh, setup minus help, and it gives you all this list, which is shown here on the screen. So you, um, if you want to uh, have a more detailed look, uh, interesting could be also uh, 
specifying the unit essentially on your on on the line on the setup command yourself unit meaning you know which kind of uh, solver for instance physical solver you want to use uh, just uh, hydrodynamics or MHD you can specify this on your um, on the setup command line there it comes also with a couple of uh, you know short short cuts or, or keys here uh, if you want to have some a combination of certain of certain physical units you can look this up also in 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 the manual here so it <coughs> For instance, if you want to have use a uniform grid, you just type plus UG, and then it collects all the files for you performing uh, uniform grid simulations. <coughs> yeah, and then uh, hopefully you will get uh, essentially your flash for executable. What you also need is your runtime parameter file, which is called flash.par. Uh, during runtime, you can specify this with this uh, option here, minus underscore, uh, minus par underscore file. You can give a different par file if you like, but if you don't, you, uh, the flash code uses flash.par. And then of course you can run it, you know, in a single core mode if you like, just uh, run flash4. And of course uh, you wanna run this in a, in a parallel environment, so you have to uh, essentially modify, I guess, your, your um, queuing script which you already did during the last weeks and this is the typical line uh, which I found out works to start the flash code with um, uh, in this case here with uh, 32 cores so in, in a parallel mode yeah and then you know you run your flash code eventually you want to have a look at your outcome um, there are a couple of, of uh, tools which you can use most prominently uh, IDL tools. So you uh, in, on all the uh, IDL tools reside in, in this uh, directory here in, in Fiddle, Fiddler 3. Um, and if you set your environment, you have to set an environment variable which is called xflash3 underscore dir um, to this directory. And also your IDL pass. And then you can t just type uh, X flash three. I didn't put this down here, and then pops up. Essentially, I have it here. Pops up an, an GUI where you can read in your data and at least very quickly look at the, the outcome of your simulations. Um, you also can use Visit or YT. It's also both of both of these tools or both of these programs support um, the flash code, and it you can load them or can use them. On high it is, I think, pro without any problem, just by loading the particular module here. Yeah, this is how the the GUI, uh, the, the IDL GUI X Flash 3 uh, looks like. So you can choose your variable you want to look at, choose the regions you want to uh, zoom in or not, and uh, do a couple of you know a couple of buttons like you want to see the density in, in log or linear. So this is a fairly rudimentary. Um, tool you can is, is essentially just for a quick visualization it doesn't do much of uh, data analysis for you but it's at least something I use quite heavily just to see whether things go right or wrong and then um, decide and then, then you can proceed and use further IDL tools to do further I, um, anal analysis of your code here of your simulation outcome so this is um, how a typical problem, they call it problem or example if you like, looks like it, uh, all these things reside in a directory uh, listed here. So in simulation, simulation main, and then the problem name. And then it typically comes with, uh, what's this, uh, six files here. <coughs> on, you don't, for, for a simple setup, you don't need much more. Uh, you have a a config file, this is uh, essentially passed by the setup script. We will have a look at this later. A specific uh, make file if, if you need some specific de uh, dependencies. Then um, you need to uh, declare your runtime parameters. This is done in the simulation data file. 
in the simulation init file, you initialize these runtime parameters. And in this simulation init block file, you uh, essentially initialize your hydro variables like density, velocity, and so on. And then you should also provide a standard you know, a runtime parameter file which works for your particular setup. So the data file looks typically quite simple. It, it uh, uh, has just a couple of, of parameters which you use in your particular setup. And it's, uh, you know, it's using the, the Fortran 90 module type thing, which can be then accessed by, by, other, um, by other programs and routines. Uh, this is the way, this is the initialization of, the, of your runtime parameters. So you call a, a what is called the database function runtime parameters get. And this is um, this, uh, the key for this parameter. And then on the, on the right hand, you see the, the um, variable name in your program. And this is typically how you uh, initialize your parameters. And you also can do, of course, some calculations here in, in your init um, <coughs> to uh, speed up, for instance, your code. So some combinations of the uh, runtime parameters. So this is the, the config file, which I, I said, this is, this is a file passed by the setup script. It comes with a couple of, of own keywords, you know, requires or uh, use setup while some of them are more or less um, self-explained. So it requires means, for instance, it requires certain modules to uh, get your setup <coughs> starting. And it has, uh, specific to your problem, uh, a keyword parameter, which you put the, the key here, and then some uh, default value if you don't specify it in your flash.par file. So this is also something you have to essentially provide uh, in your particular uh, directory if you have a new setup. Um, and then accordingly, this is the, the uh, flash.par file for your, for your setup where you find essentially you know, your, your parameters you specify in your config file, you uh, find here as well. And you can, of course, then modify it during runtime and change it and do, a, for instance, a parameter study on, on uh, certain parameters here. And uh, this is how the, essentially, the initialization of your hydro variables looks like. So the uh, init block file, so you find, again, all the structures which you already declared in, in the other files, uh, in, in, the, in the data file. You can read them in here, and you have uh, full access to them. And you, <coughs> if you look in the examples, for instance, you find a couple uh, of, uh, again, database calls. For instance, you get your uh, entire grid information. So this file is essentially called on a block basis. That, so it comes with an entry here on, on the block number So you, for your 8 by 8 grid points or 8 cube grid points in 3D, you get all the information you need. You, you get your spatial information. And then you have also access, of course, to set the density and velocity and so on for these particular grid points in, the, in this one block. Um, and if you want to do this, again, there's a, a typical uh, database call to so get uh, the block pointer to the, what is called the solution data in, in this particular case here, um, which you use then to set, for instance, your uh, velocity. And again, you use particular keywords to have access to, um, to these hydro variables. And the reason is because this is behind the solution data, for instance, is a big, big array consists of the number of, of variables in your uh, simulations, and then of course, uh, depending on on all the the grid points and blocks. So this is a big, big array. Uh, yeah, on and uh, with these simple keywords, you can access the array. So yeah, it, it, the entire code stays readable. <coughs> 
Uh, yeah, one thing I, I wanted to mention is that you know you can set your your density, velocity, and so on, but you never should forget to set the total energy uh, accordingly. So you have to you have to specify the internal energy, and then of course the um, the kinetic energy, which you can easily calculate from the velocities you set. But you should never forget this because. Uh, the flash code assumes that the total energy is set uh, initially and it has the right value and if you if you don't do this you the you know the further development or further evolution will get yeah screwed up quite a bit so you never uh, you, you always make sure that your uh, total energy is set um, and you can um, yeah, here you see the, the, the thermal energy and then you have to add, oh, here it is, actually. Then you have to add the kinetic energy, which I, I said can be calculated by the, uh, just from the velocities here. And these energies are given in, um, in energies per gram. So a specific, is a specific energy, that's why we don't see a density here. So this is uh, divided out. This is how the, the flash code treats these variables. <clears throat> yeah, this is um, essentially all the, the background I guess you need to um, do the next step, set up your, your own uh, problem and this is what I encourage you to do. For instance, set up, and I guess you have learned this already how to do this, uh, Kelvin Helmholtz um, instability problem, maybe starting with, uh, of course this is always the, the goal, you just copy uh, from a very similar setup, for instance, you can use the Orsak Tang uh, setup and then modify the according files, so the, your config files and, and data and init block files, so you get your uh, initial conditions, for instance, for your Kelman Helmholtz instability here. And um, you should maybe, uh, in, the, in the first step, you, you just create a new directory. With, the, with an appropriate name under this pass here, under the uh, source simulation simulation main directory. And uh, if, if you have modified all, your, um, all these files so you're sure that should work essentially, then you can try it. And uh, here's an example again with the, with the SOT problem, but of course, uh, to get your own problem here, you have to stick in your own name and then try whether this um, this works. So you just have to, as, as we have seen before, for any, any test problem, you have to uh, step in, in your object directory, type make, went, uh, wait until everything is, is compiled, and then hopefully you can run your uh, simulation and use your flash dot par parameter to change certain parameters. Yeah, this is essentially uh, my uh, uh, the task to you or the uh, things you can at least do this afternoon, you know, try pre-existing uh, examples, for instance, uh, the sh uh, shock tube problem or the Orsak Tang uh, vortex problem, and then from if you have some experience, gain some experience with this setup, for instance, a Kelvin Helmholtz instability problem, which is uh, not yet provided or not provided in the flash version, uh, you will get from me. Okay, that's about all I wanted to say today. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, oh, sorry. Question. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. So the uh, performance of the code, I, the only thing I can say essentially is um, it scales fairly well with the number of CPUs, also due to the reason that it's you know, f simply structured with the, uh, first of all, the block structured AMR, there's very little of bookkeeping you have to do, and with this single time step for the entire simulation. So in, in this sense, it, it scales fairly well. It is. Um, yeah, reasonably, um, it needs a, a reasonable amount of memory. You can 
typically quickly compute it just by you know the, the number of variables you need in your simulation, and then of course uh, typically a couple of, of more help helper variables, and and, and um, you have to scale them to the number of the max blocks you give them, uh, which is you know the maximum number of blocks you can use on on a single core essentially, and then de depends on the dimensionality of your of your problem. So as I said, in in 3D, a typical MHD problem with thousand um, blocks per CPU needs about a, a gigabyte of memory of 